Hey what's up guys? Today I'll show you a horror fantasy film, Nakey, Part 2. The film begins with the story of Thailand's one of the most known fantasy romance tales. It starts a thousand years ago, with a war story about Garudas and Nagas. Garudas are mythical creatures, depicted as having the head, beak, wings, and talons of an eagle, but his torso is like that of a human man, while Nagas are serpent creatures associated with snakes. One day when Nakey, a female Naga, was about to be killed, she was luckily saved by a Garuda, and that is the beginning of their love story. Nakey hid her pregnancy so as not to be punished. The couple swore to love each other in every life, and a thousand years later, her lover was reborn as an archaeology student, named Thosepal. Nakey was also reborn on the day of the solar eclipse. However, their love was bound to be doomed, as Nakey's bad karma from her past life kept haunting her. Her mother was killed before her eyes, so Nakey avenged her death by destroying the village and killing everyone. Because of that, Nikki was punished, and ordered to meditate and keep vows for a thousand years, and if she broke her vows and caused harm again, her punishment would be a thousand more severe. The scene then changes to a beautiful young girl, named Sroy, praying to Nikki. But then the scene quickly changes to Sroy looking at the blood river, full of villagers' dead bodies. Sroy wakes up, and realizes it is a dream, but she cannot go back to sleep after that. The following day, the police captain arrives at the village. The officers do not recognize him right away, as he is wearing civilian clothes. The two officers welcome Captain at their station, and immediately show him the recent cases. They are reported mainly by the villagers about ghosts. The officer takes Captain to Nakey's shrine, which has also become a tourist spot. As soon as Captain enters the shrine, he and Sroy immediately feel something that connects them. However, a drunk villager interrupts them, and curses Nakey. Sroy instructs the man to go home, but the villager attacks her instead. The officer finally comes in, and takes Sroy outside the shrine. Later that rainy night, the villager still continues to disgrace Nakey's name, and badmouths her. The following day, the drunk villager is found dead, with burned marks and animal wounds. So Captain interrogates Sroy, as she is the last person who argued with the villager. Sroy denies any relation to his death, as she only stopped him from cursing Nakey. Later that day, Sroy and Captain run to each other at the local market. Captain apologizes for his language at the police station. But he notices that Sroy is looking at someone behind him. Captain looks back, and sees a beggar-looking man staring at Sroy. The strange man leaves immediately. So Captain asks Sroy about him, but she just leaves him. The following morning, the officers show Captain a picture of the strange man last night at the market. He is the suspected killer of the drunk man, as the suspect is the one who lost the most in the lottery. They immediately go to his house and inspect, but they cannot find the suspect. However, they find a bloody rake hidden in the bush. Simultaneously, the suspect sneaks into Sroy's house and attacks her grandma. Sroy comes out and stops him, when he suddenly screams in horror, upon seeing Sroy's face. The police hear his scream, so they immediately go to the house and chase him. The suspect attempts to run away, but Captain quickly catches up to him. They take him to the police station, and lock him until the investigation is finished. After that, Captain visits Sroy and shares that he disproves his subordinate's theory that it was done by a Naga. Captain adds that it is finished, but Sroy worryingly replies that it is not. Later that night, a woman who has the same build as Sroy, goes to the police station. When the suspect sees her, he screams and shivers in horror. Meanwhile, the officer disturbs Captain's sleep and persuades him to come, as something strange has happened. The following day arrives, and the officer takes Captain to the crime scene, where a car is visibly wrecked. The police station, especially the jail, is destroyed too, and the suspect's mauled body parts are scattered on the floor. They are baffled and nervous, as no human can't cause such damage. They also notice tracks, leading to the forest on the ground, that they mysteriously end. The next day, an adventure tour guide encounters a self-proclaimed monster hunter. He wants to hunt a naga, which is a big snake. But the guide tells him that they live deep in the water. Sroy then comes in, and she remembers her dream, where she sees the hunter and the guide bathing in their own blood. So Stroy immediately warns them to be careful. Captain is just outside the establishment, and he hears everything. Later that night, two drunk villagers see Stroy going to the shrine. She prays to the goddess, unaware that four tourists look enticed outside, while holding ropes in their hands. The following day however, the villagers get more worried, as they find the four tourist bodies hanging from the trees. Captain checks a cell phone from the dead tourist, and finds pictures of the group. However, in one of the photos with Nikki's shrine, it can be seen that the woman who looks like Sroy, is photobombed. The officer sees this, and blurts out Sroy's name as he wonders about the picture. 
The villagers hear this, and when they see Sroy arriving at the crime scene with her grandma, they immediately accuse her of the murder. Captain quickly stops them, and warns them not to endanger Sroy and her grandma, unless they have proof. The headman apologizes for the villagers' behavior, and instructs them to leave the scene. Later that night, Captain goes to Sroy's, and Sroy knows that even he suspects her as the killer. Captain is always rational and skeptical, but he cannot find an explanation for the recent events. The following night, Sroy runs into the village monk at the shrine. On the other hand, the tour guide sets up the camera first, before fishing for a naga. The camera is connected to the hunter's computer, so he can watch even though he is not there. After a while, he finally catches a naga, but then, he hears growling noises coming from the forest. He immediately bags the naga, but decides to leave in a whirlpool form. Concurrently, the hunter quickly runs to his hut, as the rain pours hard outside. However, the woman who looks like Sroy, enters soon and attacks him, ending his hunting life. Simultaneously, while Captain drives to get to the hunter's place, he gets lost. Fortunately, he runs into the monk, so Captain asks for the directions. However, the monk gives him an indirect answer and leaves, so Captain has no choice but to figure the way out by himself. After a while, he gets back on the road, and goes to the hunter's hut, only to be mortified. He finds the hunter's body slashed in half, with his lower body missing, and his organs and blood on the wooden floor. At that same time, the tour guide runs into something terrifying in the forest, that causes his instant death. The following day, the villagers clamor around, as they see the tour guide's body cut in half. This causes the villagers to be more suspective of Sroy, as murders continue in their little village. Captain tries to calm them down, but the villagers cannot stay hidden in fear, and decide to use and follow their beliefs to find the real killer. Later that night, the townspeople go to a shaman to ask for help. He gets possessed by a vengeful soul, and tells the people that Sroy is the incarnation of Naki. Sroy was born during the solar eclipse, so she must die, or else the whole village will perish. The soul then kills the shaman, so the villagers immediately leave the place. A villager checks Sroy's information, and discovers that she is truly born during the solar eclipse. So to put an end to their nightmare, the villagers decide to kill Sroy to save their lives and the village. Meanwhile, Sroy goes to Naki's shrine, and cries to her, as she questions whether she really is Naki's incarnation. Sroy wonders if she really killed those people, without her knowledge. After crying to her, Sroy goes with Captain, who is waiting for her outside. They get into his car, where Sroy shares her assumption that all the grotesque that happened, is Naki's doing. She tells him how Naki's mother was killed by the villagers, and how Naki took revenge. But then, Sroy remembers her grandma telling her about a villager, nicknamed Ms. Hatred. She died in sorrow, as her mother was killed by Naki, and what's more, her true love, Jose Paul, did not love her back. Captain asks where Ms. Hatred's house is. So Sroy gives her the direction. Captain leaves Sroy before immediately driving to Ms. Hatred's house. Upon entering, Ms. Hatred attacks Captain while hiding in the dark. Captain screams in pain. But his eyes glow the color of gold, that illuminates the house. On the other hand, the two officers are doing their rounds on the village, when they encounter the angry villagers. They refuse to let them through, and stop them from killing Sroy. After that, they invade Sroy's house. But her grandma does not know where her granddaughter is. However, they still inspect the house, but soon realize she is not there. At that same time, Sroy runs away, as she discovers that the townspeople are looking for her. However, the villagers soon catch her, and take her to the mountains. While being carried to a wooden bed, Sroy remembers her dream, where she sees Ms. Hatred laughing demonically, after killing the townspeople. After climbing, the headman prepares to put Sroy on fire, when Captain comes running and stops their insanity. He tells them that Sroy is not the killer, is Ms. Hatred. This confuses them, as Ms. Hatred died years ago. Captain repeatedly tells them that Sroy is not the killer, but the villagers do not listen to him. Fortunately, the monk shows up, and stops them from killing her. He claims that it is true that Sroy is not the killer, and all that has happened are Ms. Hatred's plan. He shares that when Ms. Hatred died with Hatred, she wished to be reborn as a Naga. Right then Ms. Hatred shows up, and finally reveals herself. Apparently, she is the woman who looks like Sroy, and the actual killer who murdered all those people. It turns out, the virgin monk is actually Those Paul's incarnation, and he pleads with Ms. Hatred to stop causing suffering and deaths. However, her heart is filled with sorrow and anger, because she gave her all to Those Paul. But he only loves Naki. Ms. Hatred sobs and shrieks, before transforming into a red naga, full of evil powers. The villagers promptly run their smelly ass away upon witnessing it, leaving Captain and Sroy. Then, a flashback reveals that Those Paul also stopped Naki from killing the townspeople. 
However, it is too late for them to be together, as though Saypal was a human back then, and she accidentally killed him, when she avenged her mother's death. Back to the present, Captain immediately removes the ropes around Sroy, when Ms. Hatred sees him. Captain hugs Sroy to protect her, but fortunately, Naki appears in her white Naga form, and attacks the evil Ms. Hatred. The two attack each other, knocking over the fire, and causing it to spread. So Captain immediately frees Sroy, and runs away with her. However, as they hear Naki's continuous roars of pain, Sroy cannot stand it anymore. She breaks free from Captain, runs towards the two, and transforms into a Naga. Captain tries to stop her, when he is accidentally hit by Ms. Hatred's GPS tail, causing him to fall to the edge. Sroy attacks, but Ms. Hatred is much stronger and bigger than her. So without much fight, Sroy loses the battle, and lies on the ground beside Naki, who turns out to be Sroy's mother. They return to their human form, and are weak from Ms. Hatred's attacks. But Ms. Hatred is not done. She prepares to kill them, when Captain suddenly emerges from below in his Garuda form. His gold light illuminates the place, and he pierces his eagle foot to her body contaminated with hatreds. After Ms. Hatred is killed, the eagle man flies away. Sroy cries as she holds Naki's hand next to her face, until Naki vanishes. After a while, Captain returns, now in his human form, and hugs Sroy as she cries for her mother. The film ends with Captain praying that Naki finds her true love, and asks if he can date her daughter, Sroy. On the other side, Naki and Thosepal's incarnations accidentally meet each other, when they take pictures of the place where Naki and Thosepal met for the first time, and fell in love.